Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven tips to help fish enthusiasts like you. But even though most of you are here for the fish content, my most popular video is still my axolotl care video. And I've actually gotten several people asking me questions on what exactly I specifically purchased for my tank. Now that tank is not currently set up, which is why we have this talking head video, different background than usual. So if you're here for the fish, Feel free to skip this video or stick around if you want to hear the differences between what you would keep in a fish aquarium versus in an axolotl aquarium. Just a reminder, this is my personal shopping list for what I purchased for my setup. There are many different kinds of axolotl tank setups you can do, but if you're interested, I put the links to everything down in the description. All right, first off is the tank. I would recommend a 20 gallon long, which is not the size I used, but frankly, it's got the nice long horizontal space for your axolotl to swim around more in, and then more water for one axolotl means less water changes for you. And then you don't need a lid or hood for the aquarium because you actually want to keep the top open so that you'll have evaporative cooling to keep that water temperature down. Some people put like a, a mesh lid on it instead. And then for aquarium lighting, I just used a regular old aquarium kit light I had lying around, very dim, only turned it on when I was looking at my X level. But if you're thinking of keeping live aquarium plants in there, you will want a specialized planted light of some sort. All right, filtration. So back in the day, I actually had an AquaClear 50 hang on back filter, um, which is really nice because you can customize all the media inside of it. And I felt like this really helps with not only biological filtration, but also mechanical filtration. You can put in filter floss in there if you want to um, remove the, I guess as Go Herping puts it, axolotl poop confetti <laughs> from the water. And then I have an intake sponge here, again, to prevent just the big chunks of detritus from getting and possibly ruining the motor. What I really like about this filter is it has an adjustable flow uh, right here, but if you're looking for something even gentler, I would definitely recommend a sponge filter. It's going to be great for growing beneficial bacteria, uh, mechanical filtration, and then because of the bubbles, there's going to be more aeration in the water as well. And speaking of having slow current in your axolotl tank, I actually like to use fake tall plants like this one, and I would put them right underneath the filter output of the hang on back filter, and that really helped to dissipate the flow of the water uh, and make things a lot calmer for the axolotl, which they enjoy. Of course, the piece of decor that everyone always asks me about is this one. <laughs> So this is a fake driftwood piece from PetSmart. They still sell it um, as of this video, but I love it because it's got only smooth uh, surfaces and edges. The plants are pretty soft and there's just so many different layers for the axolotl to climb on and explore. There's lots of shadows created, little caves. Uh, definitely the best hide slash jungle gym uh, that I could find for my axolotls. And finally, for substrate at the bottom of the aquarium, I personally went with bare bottom. Originally, I started off with a couple pieces of tile that I got from my local hardware store, but eventually I removed those and my axolotls didn't seem stressed at all by the bare bottom tank. Okay, let's talk about cooling. Obviously, the best slash most expensive option is using a chiller. Uh, runs in the several hundred dollars amount. You might be able to find a good one on Craigslist from like a saltwater tank owner uh, who's getting out of the business. But for me, what worked was I bought this reflective insulation foil. Again, you can get it from the local hardware store. <laughs> it's about this thick. It's pretty cheap. And then I just cut it out so that it fit the three sides of the tank that were not the front viewing panel. So kind of like this and then you would have the front panel facing you. And I actually couldn't see the reflective foil at all uh, from the inside of the tank, which was really cool. Now to cool down the tank, what you want to have is remember no lid or mesh lid. And then I just bought this really simple USB fan. I think it's meant for computers. Um, and it has this twisty bendy neck, which is great because then you can angle it in any direction that you want. Then, because it's USB powered, I did have to get a USB adapter. So I would just plug this thing in, angle it down, 
and then I mounted it with command strips on the back to the wall, like this, so it was around the top of the tank. And then here, I just use like an extension power cord to plug it down to the nearest outlet. So really simple setup. I like it because it's super quiet, doesn't take up a lot of space, and it's relatively inexpensive compared to a chiller. And then to make sure that your water is always cool enough, I highly recommend getting a digital thermometer that has a high and low alarms. This thing is great because you can, again, set the alarms for when it's too hot or too cold, and then it'll let you know if you're in the house very loud, very clear that something's going on and you need to take action. Other things you may need include a good sturdy aquarium stand, maybe a power strip if you don't have enough outlets nearby, a siphon to suck up all the detritus in the tank when you do water changes, dechlorinator of course, if you have tap water that has chlorine or chloramine in it, you need to remove that, food, I'm not going to get into that, that's a whole other video, and then finally test strips, so that will help you measure if there's toxic amounts of nitrogen compounds in the water. And that is my quick and dirty personal shopping list for an axolotl tank, but definitely comment below with anything I may have missed, and check out my other axolotl tutorials in this playlist over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video, which will definitely be about planted tanks, promise.